hello everyone and thank you all so much for stopping by in today's video i'll be showing you how to make homemade tomato paste let's get started these are the tomatoes that i'm going to be working with today and they are plum tomatoes you can use any other tomatoes you prefer and when buying the tomatoes it is important to look out for the ones that are very ripe and red in color I'll also be adding some paprika for some extra rich red color. It is totally optional. So you can decide to use only tomatoes or you can use a red bell pepper instead of the paprika. So the first step is to wash or rinse the tomatoes nicely and I'll be rinsing mine with some white vinegar. You can also use salt as well. So once the rinsing process is done, the next stage is to go ahead and chop up all the tomatoes and paprika. And I'm going to start off by cutting off the head just like this. And then next, I'll proceed to cut each tomatoes into four. Now you can decide if you want to deseed the tomatoes or not. For me, I'm going to be leaving the seed in. So I'm going to continue this process till I'm done cutting or chopping up all the tomatoes and once that is done, I'll set them aside and then proceed to deseed and cut up the paprikas as well. So at this stage, I'm deseeding the paprikas and once I have everything cut up, we're going to go ahead and blend them up with the tomatoes and we will be ready to make our homemade tomato paste. So moving over to the next step, transfer some of the tomatoes and paprika into your blender. Go ahead and add just a bit of water to help the blades and then blend up until smooth. After blending the first batch, I'll go ahead and strain that into a big enough pot, leaving a bit of the tomatoes behind in the blender to blend the next batch. That way I don't have to add water to blend each batch, okay? So now I'm just going to go ahead and pass the tomatoes through the sieve to get rid of any seed or tomato skin because we want our tomato paste to come out spotless, okay? So this step is very, very important. So please make sure you do not skip this step, okay? Now take a look at all those seeds and skin from the tomatoes and paprika. You can now see why this step is very, very important. So please do not skip this step, okay? And once I have everything blended and strained, I'm going to transfer to the cooker top and allow to come to a boil on a medium heat. Once it comes to a boil, we're going to allow this to simmer away till all the liquid or water gets evaporated. So it is very important to keep your flame on a medium heat and also do not stir at this stage so that your tomato paste will not start burning, okay? And also, I highly recommend a non-stick pot for this recipe. So at this stage, you can see all the liquid or water is almost getting evaporated. So now we're going to turn the heat from medium to low, okay? And then we're going to continue simmering this until all the liquid gets evaporated and then the tomato paste gets very, very concentrated. I 
at this stage the tomato paste is ready so we now have a very very concentrated paste as you can see so the next thing i'm going to do now is to transfer this to a bowl and just allow it to cool completely before storing So once our tomato paste is nice and cool, we're going to go ahead and store them. And I'll be storing them with these containers I have right here. I'll be using this bigger one to store in my fridge while I use the smaller ones to store in my freezer. And these um, smaller bowls are freezer safe, okay? But however, you can also use some plastic containers, okay? So I'm going to go ahead right now and scoop in this very one which I'll be storing in my fridge. And then I'll proceed to also store the ones I'm going to be keeping in my freezer. And to preserve the one I'm going to be storing in my fridge, I'm going to go ahead and pour some oil on top and this will serve as a preservative. And this will last up to a month in the fridge, that is if it gets to last that long, okay? So once I'm done, I'm going to cover this up and set aside. So for these ones that I'm going to be storing in the freezer, we don't need to add any preservatives and they can last up to a year or more in the freezer depending on the quantity and how you use them. So at this stage, I will just go ahead and level up the tomato paste a bit before placing the lids. And once that step is completed, I will scoop in the remaining ones into some ice cube tray and just use them for those recipes that requires little tomato paste. So now that you know how to make tomato paste, I hope you give this a try and let me know how it turns out for you. And in my upcoming tomato paste recipe, I'm going to show you how to store this without a fridge or a freezer. So if you like this video, please go ahead and click the like button and subscribe if you are not yet already. And I will see you in my another video. Until then, stay safe and bye for now.